Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone, but feeling good and feeling strong, knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving. Hey now, all. I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that encourages and helps you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. Here with me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Joe. <laughs> so we're back. We're back. We're back again. Better and than never. I'm going to start it out here and say, let's talk about death. All right. <laughs> like we didn't do that in the last episode. <laughs> this this time it's physical death. The though, physical, right? actual, okay. real death. This is a lovely, happy topic, isn't it? <laughs> let's not talk about death. Yeah, little things. Yeah, it's little things that make us happy. So when we look at at different religions, um, whether it's religions or belief systems or whatever it is, there's so many different perspectives on what happens to a person after they die. Kick it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah after everything shuts down. Yeah. Um, from the spiritual and magical perspective, what's the, the spirit Sherpa position on death? Is death the end? No. Okay. So when we die, there are two stages. The first stage is where we leave our bodies and we enter into the spirit world. In that space, we are on the astral. Okay. Right? Now, the astral is where ghosts exist. Okay. We all become ghosts for a period of time after we die. For people who die violently, they may be ghosts for longer than for people who pass when they expected to be dying. Right? Okay. In fact, a lot of times you'll hear people like me who talk to dead people say, wow, you know, there's this ghost. And the very first thing you say to a ghost that you want to cross over is you say, you do know you're dead, don't you? And inevitably, the words that come back to you are, wow, that would explain so much. <laughs> Because they don't know. Because they didn't know. Really? Yeah. They're walking around wondering why nobody's talking to them. And that could have been going on for years. And they don't even realize it's years. Correct. Because there is no sense of time in the spirit world because that's part of the physical reality. They sort of pop in and pop out. If you, if you want a sense of what it's like to be a ghost, watch the movie The Others. Okay. It's a really good movie. Who was in that one? I feel like I... Uh, I Nicole did. Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Yes, that was a very good one. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a really good and fairly accurate indicator of what happens for a ghost. Really? We all become ghosts for a while. We all attend our own funerals. I went to my father's funeral recently, and I would never tell my stepmother this, but I have absolutely no fear that she'll listen to this, ep this podcast, <laughs> so I'm going to say it to you, which is that my father was sitting in the audience going, Paul! <laughs> and I was refusing to acknowledge that I saw him because he really wanted a wake and he got a funeral. You never know what you're going to see when you see dead people at funerals. So they all attend their own funeral. We all attend it. And we all visit with our loved ones for a time. Now, where things can go wrong is when there is either unfinished business or over concern for those who have been left behind. So if you have a family member who is taking things extraordinarily hard, the spirit may stay with them to make sure they're okay. And sometimes they get stuck when even they if do that. They, so they stay even if they know they're dead in that yes. case. Yes. Yeah. They stay to, to look after the person, hmm. to watch over someone. Sometimes they can get stuck when that happens. And if a ghost is around long enough, they go a little nuts because they lose track of reality and they lose track of their, their grounding points. So in order to stay sane on the astral, you have to have a grounding point in the physical. And the person that you stayed for is your grounding point. But if you lose track of that, then you lose track of your sanity because now you're just a random spirit on the astral and you can devolve. And that's where poltergeists come from. Poltergeists are, are spirits that got really angry mm -hmm. and learned how to take advantage of that. So typically, the average person's going to spend 
a few days to a couple of weeks on the astral until they make sure that everybody seems okay to them. And then they will cross over into the light. This is where you enter into beyond the veil, right? You go into the other side. Well, that's the obvious next question is, where do you go after you go into the light? What's the light? Yeah, the light is the place where you go back to the central spirit hub is sort of a way to think of it. It's remember, we all talk about, oh, we're all one, Mm -hmm. right? Well, that's where we're all one. Okay. So there's a shedding that happens as we do this, okay? We shed our bodies when we go from physical into the astral. We shed our personalities when we go from the astral into the other side, into the light. Because we are no longer playing the game of the physical reality. And so if you ever played a role-playing game, Mm -hmm. you make a character and then you develop that character's attributes and you always give the character flaws because that makes it more interesting to play. Exactly. Right. And then you begin playing the game. Okay. So that's the same thing we do in the spiritual realm. We say, who do I want to be? Who do I want my parents to be to create me into the person that I want to become? And what are the personality traits that I want to come in with? What's the body type I want? Do I want to be a boy or a girl? Do I want to, you know, what, whatever else is going on around you, right? And what, what is my mission going to be? And blah, 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 right? And then you incarnate by being born and you start playing the role playing game. Okay. So we're rolling out these characters oh, yeah. from the spiritual. Oh, yeah. And that we come into, into the physical. Yeah. Not only that, but you're choosing the players that you're playing with. You've got a spirit family that you work with. And that we incarnate with over and over and over again. So if you've ever had the experience of meeting someone and feeling like you've known them forever, mm-hmm. you have. Okay. They're part of your spirit family. They may be there for a moment mm-hmm. or they may be there for a lifetime. But that moment is usually a pivotal moment if they're there. Mm-hmm. And you arrange with them to play different characters. So in one life, this spirit family member might be your mother. In another life, they might be your daughter. They might be your sister. They might be your best friend or your husband or, you know, whatever. We all just mix and match and roll the game up again and start over. It's the most epic game of D&D ever. Awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> but when you die, your character dies in the game, mm-hmm. right? And when you go back into the light, you throw away the character and you just become the person that created the character in the first place. Okay? You still remember everything about that character, but you no longer believe that you are them. So that's where you're shedding that that personality. personality correct. Okay. Yeah. You still remember all the pieces about being you, being that character, playing that character. You may have a lot of affinity and affection for that character, but you know that that character is not you, that it was a role you were playing. Hmm. Right? So when you're a medium and you talk to dead people, which I do, what happens is you will come across people, and this is the Ask Kelly portion of the program and we're going to just do it early today. yeah let's let's rock into um it. but i i had somebody ask me this question and that but that actually was the foundation for this entire episode <laughs> um somebody asked me how do you know if you're talking to a ghost or if you're talking to somebody who has crossed over mm-hmm. because you can talk to people who have crossed over they will come back sometimes right okay so hold on a second so you're saying that the ghost who's in the astral mm-hmm they cross over, they go into the spiritual. Mm-hmm. You're saying they can come back into the astral? Sure. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, they created the thing that came into the astral in the first place. Why wouldn't they be able to come back? Okay. Right? So So how do you know whether it's a crossed over being? How do you know which one it or, is, or, right? The answer is, do they believe that the personality is them or are they just representing the personality for you? And how strong that personality comes through is the indicator. So when they come back after crossing over they're actually assuming that role again yeah oh very cool it's like yeah. when they when you reboot a tv show yeah and much. they bring all the characters back right and <laughs> and um so i'll give you an example i did a reading for a, a friend of mine years ago and we brought through his grandmother and his grandmother came back and she was showing me the first face i saw was an older woman with uh dark salt and pepper hair you know, her hair was black and white with and uh, in tight, tight, severe bun. And he said, yep, that's what she looked like. And I went, okay. I said, but then she's flashing back and forth on me here because she'll show me that face. And then she's this blonde bombshell 
with all this curly, beautiful locks of hair. And he said, yeah, he said, that's what she looked like when she was younger. And she was always so sad that her hair did not look that way anymore. <laughs> and I said, well, she's telling me to tell you that on the other side, that's who she is. <laughs> that she's she remembers herself in that way, not as your grandmother face, because that's who she keeps morphing into. She's showing me this face so that you recognize her. But this is who she remembers herself. That's as. the biggest affinity that she has for that personality. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so that's how I knew she had crossed over, mm -hmm. right? Because she was showing me both faces, mm -hmm. right? Again, a movie reference. I love movie references <laughs> because they, they give you a feel for the space. What Dreams May Come. Oh, great, great movie. movie. Great movie. For describing what's on the other side. Makes right? you cry, too. It really does. So cry. Really does. <laughs> but the other side is infinitely creative. Mm -hmm. We create our reality in an instant, in every thought, every movement every path every every minor thing that flits through our brain comes into reality immediately on the other side it's like manifesting on steroids exactly and so our reality is constantly morphing depending upon who's in the space mm -hmm. and reality isn't always reality anyway because we have these different perspectives on it you know, this is this is the differential. So when I talk to somebody who has just crossed over or who is still in ghost form, they are still holding on to that personality. And they are usually still dressed in the clothes that they were in when they died. Because mm. they um, think that they are still that that person exactly. in that moment. Yeah, I, I had a ghost in my house in Connecticut. I lived across the street from a Revolutionary War uh, massacre site uh, called Fort Griswold. There was a Revolutionary War soldier who lived in my house because it was a carriage house. Mm -hmm. And so I laid down my first night and he shook my bed. And I was, I, I jumped up out of bed mm -hmm. and, and I immediately went down to the basement to see if the furnace had kicked on. And, you know, because it was like the bed was vibrating, right? Yeah. And it was like, you know, a friend of mine accused me of feeding at psychic quarters, <laughs> <laughs> the magic finger psychic quarters. Um, and uh, I went out and I pulled out my map and back in the days of maps. And I looked at the uh, and I looked to see if there was a railroad track somewhere nearby that would have caused my bed mm -hmm. to shake. Or, you know, I was looking for everything I could think of. Right. Nothing. And I'm just like, ah! and I finally I just pulled the covers up over my head and went, go away, leave me alone. And it stopped because I acknowledged him. Mm -hmm. And that's all he wanted. So I ended up coming to an agreement with him that was. You know, I will talk to you periodically if you will stop shaking my bed because <laughs> you're freaking me out. <laughs> and, but when I saw him, he always showed up in his Revolutionary War outfit. He was always in full dress with the, the musket and the whole nine yards, right? In, in that, that persona that was the point of death. Exactly. So he was a ghost. Yeah. He never morphed. He never was anything else. He just was a ghost. Yeah. And stuck. At that stuck. point, talk about losing grounding. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. The fact that he was still cohesive was a testament to the energy of the space. Mm -hmm. The energy of the massacre was so significant that that's what connected him. That's what grounded him. That was his grounding point. Yeah. Wow. What a horrific thought. Yeah. To be grounded to the physical by such a intense event. Yeah. Okay, I want to move away from that for a second, uh, not just because I'm going to cry, but you talked a little bit about what dreams may come and that sort of being what the afterlife is like. Mm -hmm. When you cross over, that's what it's like over there. I mean, for people who are unsure and are sitting here and starting this part of their journey, and they're like, well, what's it like? What What is it like? You know, because there's stories of what heaven is like, what, you know, what, whatever, hell, is like. what hell is like, yeah. right? Although, you know, according to Papal Bull of 1997, Pope John Paul II said that hell is not an actual place. It is in the state of being separate from God. Freaking awesome. Uh, and true. Yeah, what we believe we'll find on the other side is what we find. I want to emphasize to the listeners here to take that in for a second. Say that again. What we believe we will find on the other side is what we actually find. Because we are eminently creative creatures. And we will create our beliefs and if we believe that we will be tortured, we will be tortured. If we believe that we will be welcomed and loved by our loved ones, we will be welcomed and loved by our loved ones. If we believe that there is nothing, there will be a void. 
Whatever we believe is what we create. So ultimately, all of those beliefs, all of those perspectives, all of those those systems, if you believe in them, mm -hmm. they're true. They're true. Yep. So they're all true. They're all true. Even the what is it? 99 virgins for a <laughs> yeah. for a martyr? Yeah. yeah. Even that. Yeah. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the spirit doctor has just blown your mind again. <laughs> again. This is bananas. All right. We've done uh, Ask Kelly early. Yeah. Uh, is there any other Ask Kelly you want to do? Yeah. Let's talk about the Akashic Records. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Because they're kind of in the same realm as the other side. Okay. Okay. So in physics, there's something known as the zero point field. Mm -hmm. It is the place at which all things are happening in this moment right now that there is no time or space that there's there's no third and fourth dimensions right just everything is happening all at once in the eternal moment of now so that's the zero point field coincidentally or not it is also the akashic records that's where the akashic records that's where exist. the akashic records exist so you you go back into this space of we are all one where you remove time and space and personality and character and whatever else, right? We are all one and every moment is all now. Yes. And all things that ever could happen have happened are happening right now. Mm -hmm. So multiple dimensions of reality and multiple timelines and multiple lifetimes and multiple spirits. And it's all in one place at one time. That is the Akashic Records. And... The thing, because I know you're going to ask how. Because that's, <laughs> that's what I do. That's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna tell you a secret about magic. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. It's the most important secret about magic that there is. Okay. Get ready to pause, folks. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Everything is intention. Okay. The way you do anything is by intending to do it and then getting your belief out of the way that you can't. Okay. That's actually pretty significant because it's not about the magic words. It's not how you wave your wand. It's not about the right phase of the moon. Right. Or do you have enough crystals? In fact, you don't need any crystals and it doesn't matter where the moon is. And what were the things that you said? I'm thinking Harry Potter at this <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, the wand. Yeah. I love Harry Potter. Right. I, I watched all the movies. I read all the books. I love Harry Potter. <laughs> not, not terribly magically accurate, but fun. And... Um, <laughs> You know what's magically accurate, ironically? The TV show Supernatural is, is it really? fairly magically accurate. It's mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Um, anyway, back to, you know, Squirrel Land. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't need a wand. You don't need a, you don't need anything. And in fact, the more you rely on tools, the less uh, you are yourself. available to do things when you don't have your tools, right? So, so when we talk about the Akashic, then mm -hmm. all you have to do is intend and believe and trust in your ability to be in that yeah. eternal now. To to just reach into it and get the answer you need. Hmm. People ask me things all the time that I don't know the answer to, and I reach into the Akashic and I give them the answer. And I'm like, good question. Here's the answer. <laughs> and, you know, it sounds like I knew what the hell I was talking about. And five seconds before, I didn't know the answer because I never asked. Right. And, you know, I'm just pulling it straight out of the Akashic. <laughs> so, you know, you, you get to the point, if you do it often enough, you can do it in real time like I do. Okay. When you think about things for long enough, you develop an established neural connection. Mm-hmm. And they are, those things come to you very quickly, right? They just come, come, come. This is the same thing. If you return to that place over and over and over again, you establish a well-worn neural connection mm -hmm. that takes you, or energetic connection in this case, that takes you to that place. And so it's almost like you've got an ongoing open line yeah. in, in that process. you got to train your brain. Yeah. You you, you're train training, your brain. training your energy field and training your brain. Yep. Awesome. All right. That's a good one. I'm glad we, we hit on that one. Yeah. I, I feel like we could almost do a whole episode on Akashic stuff too, though. Maybe someday. Okay. Okay, maybe. Whatever makes you happy, honey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That is all that we have. I'm assuming you're good with that from mm -hmm. that perspective. Awesome. All right. That's all that we have for this week, guys. Be sure to join us next time as we delve even deeper 
into the magical world. I'm Joey C. here with the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta, and thank you for listening to Spirit Sherpa. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now, so I leave behind a little fear. Spirit Sherpa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at KellySparta.com. To sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to KellySparta.com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. Thank you.